sir, and you and um, and that will include a second nurse, a second full-time nurse, in addition to the other part-time nurses that we have right now. Um, and we look to really be strengthening our vaccine program, um, our age and dementia friendly work, tick and mosquito-borne disease education, um, and school relationships that really ended up being such an important part of containing the, the pandemic. So, but again, we'll be talking more with the oversight committee that you guys sit on um, about where you wanna take that, that growth in the nursing program um, now that we have the grant. Um, so yeah, I know you have a lot on your agenda and it's your first time back together. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time, but so I'm here about two things. One is the, the Cooperative Public Health Service actual intermunicipal agreement, which I know you've had for a while. Um, it's the same agreement that we've had for the last 12 years or so. Um, and uh, it, uh, it is the tool that it's uh, a contract between the town of Deerfield and the Franklin Regional Council of Governments that builds the oversight structure, the assessment structure, you know, that is sort of the tool that creates the health district. Um, and that is the thing that we are hoping that you will sign again, as you have for many years. Um, and then the other uh, thing I'm here to report on is another agreement we had with you, and I think was the last time I was before your board, which was for the CARES Act MOU. So as you may remember, the contact tracing work um, what is one of the allowable expenses under the CARES Act. And that um, we've now come twice, I think, for that CARES Act MOU to be, we came once and then when the CARES Act was extended past December, we came back um, to get an extension on that. You've long <laughs> exceeded the limits on, um, on, we've spent it all on contact tracing and then some, um, I'm not here to ask you to sign another one on that. I think at this point, the the pandemic is looking like we can certainly handle anything that happens. There are no new cases, you know, right now. Anyway, um, so I think that we're, we'll, I will use the state funding that was given to me to cover the overage for Deerfield and let's just consider the CARES MOU done. Um, and I don't think there's any need for any other at this point, we're shifting back over. We'll be getting rid of some of the part time um, contact tracers and kind of moving into full on open, you know, nursing activities again. So are you uh, applying for the new grant or maybe not contact in the fall? So I'm hoping to talk to you guys about it at the oversight board meeting. Um, it is certainly, it is intended, you're talking about the ELC grant that just came out. So it's intended to be mostly for the towns that re relied really intensely on the contact tracing collaborative. Um, and you probably saw the part in there, the language that said, and if we just funded you under the public health excellence grant, we will be noticing that when you apply. But what I think is interesting about it is it, it would allow us to get an epidemiologist if you guys were interested in that. Um, it, I don't know that we need more nursing capacity, frankly. I think we can handle what we, what, with what we have now, we can handle what is coming, I hope. Um, and, but what it would do is it could potentially, if you read through that grant, it says, if you already have nurses, you can't get the nurses until you hire, you can't get more nurses through that grant unless you hire epidemiologists first. And when they say epidemiologist, they don't mean like the person who's tracking the Ebola virus outbreak. They mean someone who can look at your health data and run reports for you and tell you where trends are going and kind of provide potentially interesting could be around mosquito or tick or, or a chronic disease or, you know, substance use disorder could be almost anything. So that's the thing I think would, that they might fund us for. And I'm well, very interested to hear what you're is, thinking. Uh, our school system received a lot of Deerfield and Montague students in Sunderland and Montague UI on CGC. And so it would be, I think it would be public health nurse or some contact tracing ability and the unit 38 as a whole, as well as bring the money. So I was looking for some kind of partnership with Indio Monty and Union 38, because our students from so much school choice here that we have that exposure, but then also we have to take from the lower valley um, you know, to the college. Yeah, yeah. No. So this unit 
is really important to make sure that we have adequate coverage. And that was one thing that we noticed. You know, I made a point of calling every day or a couple of days to make sure that what was happening in Green Hill Montague and Sunderland, because we, of course, you know, it was only a little bit of time. So there was way to Sunderland, Montague, Greenfield that I had to reach out to on a regular basis. And it was very helpful not to have to do that in the fall. I, yeah. I can totally see your point. Um, I know that Waitley is hiring a new full-time public health nurse through the Excellence Grant as well. Um, certainly. Oh, oh dear. Jeez, no one's ever said that before. Okay. <laughs> so I think, I think I'll just say something loud so everybody can hear. You know, this is the first meeting we're trying to do with people in the room and here and through so Zoom. Um, and we are looking at getting new audio equipment to make sure that everybody can hear at some point so um so on the zoom account apparently you're not quite coming out but on the television you're coming out loud and clear because the mic's hooked into there so i see so it's the, it's the sound into zoom which we're getting a new mixer and we've been working on this all week so should I get that. closer and Carolyn and I can share this microphone or something like turn it back and forth or they can hear you that way. Sure yeah, that's that. not that right up to the middle. So that's, okay. that's the issue. Is only that mic like in Zoom? There is well they both should be going in there. So I don't know. Maybe it's coming out of one channel that she doesn't have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So no mic patience, the everyone. Yeah. At this point. So okay. We'll speak loud. I'll be. I'll, I'll let me. Well, I want to answer one of your questions, Carolyn, which is, um, I did meet with Montague, Deerfield. I mean, not Montague, not Deerfield. Montague, Greenfield, and Sunderland this week to talk about the public health excellence grant that's still available and the um, ELC grant. And because I, I totally recognize the thing you're talking about. Um, they made a decision as a group not to pursue the public health excellence grant. Um, I don't know about the ELC grant. So that is not, that is not due yet. Um, yeah. So that might be good to pursue and certainly we'll be talking about it at our oversight board meeting too. Um, well, so how many hours on our $22,000 assessment do we get for this now? Um, we don't really divide it by the hours. I mean, as you know, she's here every Wednesday. Um, and we have four hours. what's that? I said she's available four hours. She's available open to the public for four hours. She's um, on Wednesdays, but she's frequently in, you know, visiting people at home, meeting people, answering people on the phone. Um, when the boards of health involved in the health district set up this system. Nobody wanted to do it by the hour, as you may remember, um, because the feeling was once you start to track the hours, then all of a sudden you start to pay by the hour, then all of a sudden, you know, a, a pandemic comes and you can't afford it anymore. So our, our uh, vision has always been that we would agree to do everything that needed to be done and meet regularly with the boards to get feedback on how we were doing. So I think we are in a moment of completely reinvent it, you know, everything just, this is your first meeting. This is the first, you know, week or two that she's been able to see people in the office. And so um, I think that if you guys have thoughts about um, new services you'd like, different services you'd like, you know, everything's on the table. Well, I, I think we want to specify that we get a certain number of hours because, you know, as you know, the original number of towns almost doubled. Yes. Okay, so there's only one reason. I know you're hiring a second nurse, and that nurse has been covered for by grant for two years. So I feel that somehow our assessment should reflect that you know we have a reduction. There is double the nurse, but that second nurse is, is being paid for. So there should be some reduction in that uh, original assessment. But one of the reasons why I don't you know, the contract doesn't specify number of hours, but it also doesn't specify credit for the office. Um, there's 338 square feet in the office. And, you know, we're going 
low going rate is fourteen to sixteen dollars. Mm -hmm. So even if you like have that seven fifty, um, you know it's, it's significant money. It's, you know almost twenty five hundred dollars a month. You know we you know provide heat, air conditioning, phone, internet, electricity, coffee, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, and there is no you know every time we go. And I, you know, I feel like if you, even if we had solid eight hours of Lisa, you know, that's and you, and you multiply that out what we're paying, say twenty two thousand dollars, and you multiply that out of a week, that's a hundred and seven thousand dollar position. And you know, so I feel like um, our the contract doesn't reflect the fact that we had. You know that we're we'll providing office space for the entire, you know, group, you know, all the towns. And then the other thing that happened, of course, Lisa was just outstripped contact tracing. So there's no nothing we could have done the first part of uh, the pandemic. But the second part of the pandemic, she was the vaccine manager, and this was identified way last summer um, on multiple meetings that I had. This was kind of the bottom, and she did not be available. So, I would like our assessment for 21 to collect uh, reimbursement for some use of the office, but also for not having services provided in use of the doing that uh, vaccine management. Because the first part did deliver to all of our yes recently, all the clinics, 10,000 shots. And at $45 a shot, you know, that's about $450,000. So by the time you collect it, say you just round it down to $400,000, Lisa should be covered under the county wide because that was providing, that service was provided county wide. So her, our assessment should be reimbursed at least by half because she was not available to us. She was out straight doing that. Vaccine management. She couldn't even do clinics for us half the time because she was scheduled two, three, four, five times a week. So it, we belong to the, you know, the district because Lisa's fabulous. There's no question. She was our our nurse before and wanted to keep her. But um, I feel like this contract is not, uh, you know, doesn't represent what. Got for services this past year, and, and there's no certain no credit for our office space. And I would like to use that money. I realize, you know, you've got to get, you got to get the money from the insurance companies and all that kind of stuff. But I would like to see we have the city grant at the seniors. The seniors were the ones that were impacted and get, did not get the services. So I would like to contract use this assessment money from um, here. This contract from the past year and some discount for our um, office space towards uh, community service coordinator, uh, social service coordinator, so that we can offer services to the seniors that were impacted through the community health center. They we have a seat grant for 12 hours, and if we work with the community health center, we'll be able to get a more robust credential person. For that job, and a few hours left over for Deerfield. We're, you know, we're thinking um, maybe we'll be under ten thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure it'd be the difference between for this good credential person. Then we can uh, we would follow up for the CSO that um, is with the police department. They're like emergency care. They intervene if it's like some suicidal. You know. They're intervening that time, but this person is then to the follow up. So I think it's it's a community wide benefit to all of our, um, you know, to the full community, not just the seniors. But the seniors were definitely impacted by um, services not being delivered the way they were supposed to be delivered. And, you know, I, I just feel that this, this doesn't reflect the contract of the reflect that. So let me try to answer a few of your questions. Um, 
You're right that the contract doesn't say, doesn't describe the, the discount, but it does exist. And so that's on me. I can go back and um, revise the contract. We certainly have always taken that into account. There's a spreadsheet I can bring you and show you. I brought it last time. Um, I think I met with Diana to go over what the discount was the last time this was signed. So it absolutely exists and includes a square foot analysis. Um, so I can definitely revise the contract and send that to you so you can see what that is. Um, I, I hear you about the disappointment at not being able to receive the standard nursing services during this year. I know it's shared by every member of the district. Um, I have to say that the nursing program, you know, tripled in size without an extra penny, you know, of taxpayer money from the town of Deerfield literally hundreds of people were contacted, you know, and received supportive, positive interactions with their town nurse, town nurses and contact tracers, you know, um, during this period of time. And so um, I think we're all really worried about the impact on isolated seniors of, of this past year. We're, we're, we're deeply worried about that. And that's absolutely a focus of what we want to do now. I don't have, I mean, you've already paid for this year and I would say your money was well spent in managing this pandemic in comparison to many other communities we did really well in Deerfield, you know. Um, uh, and so I don't, I, I don't, uh, it would not be easy for me to somehow retroactively give you a discount to this is the end of the fiscal year now. So you've already paid for your membership for this year. For next year, we did just reduce the assessment from the um, increase that was intended to happen based on understanding the, that we had received the grant after we'd already sent that out. So that has happened, maybe not to the extent that you were hoping it would, um, but I can, you know, that number is lower for this coming year than you were told it was going to be. Um, and as for the insurance money, I think that is a, a council of governments um, decision. You see what we're trying to, what I'm talking about. Lisa was available to the entire county. The entire county was charged for the insurance shots. And yet we, as the core group, were paying for that assessment. So and when she was not available to us as a public health nurse mm -hmm. giving those services. So I feel, yeah. you know, that when the money comes in, that should be appropriated to all the towns. I think we should have that conversation at the, I mean, I know that, that, that the council is the place where we have to have that. And I, I totally hear you. I mean, because you're right. The strength of this district made a lot of what happened for the rest of the county possible. And, um, and in the past, the flu vaccine insurance has always come back to be used again in the district. Now we've never said you can't come here and get vaccinated if you're from Sunderland or Waitley, right? I mean, it's it's all for one and one for all when it comes to disease. Um, but uh, but you raise a really good point, and I think that it's a worthwhile conversation that perhaps we can turn to the chair of the Cog, uh, council and uh, <laughs> and say maybe we can have that discussion. You know, um, I'm certainly we have absolutely no idea how much money is going to come back. We, um, it could be as much as $450,000. You know, the way the insurances are, are um, set up, it's less money for the first dose, more money for the second dose. Um, it's, it's different insurances pay different amounts. We, it, this is a whole new world. We have no idea. It could be as little as 200,000. It could be as much as 450. You know, it could, we just have no idea. And I think that we're really lucky that the full cog council thus far has set aside thousands and thousands of dollars that, that subsidized this regional um, effort as well. So I do think that that's a really interesting conversation and a really good point, Carolyn. And I would be happy to have that conversation. It, maybe we wanna come up with some ideas that we bring to that, like the thing you just described um, um, that well, we bring feel, to that conversation. I, you know, I feel like it's really important that we make up the services somehow to the seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, they were isolated during the COVID year. And, and so having um, a social worker available to them would, would you know, supplement what, what they missed out this past year, I think. I think we learned a lot this year about all of the people who are really hurting in our communities. And there are other populations of people in this town and in this county who really 
suffered in this past year that's, um, and, that's and why who I, also need yeah. more help. Yeah, um, that's why we were hoping to do it for a few hours a week, mm -hmm. Deerfield specific. And yes, I, I, uh, I, heard, I heard about this project and, and um, it's a neat idea. Um, so I'm, I'm very supportive of creative thinking around how that insurance works. I'm not the decider about that money at the COG, um, but I am, I am, I, I totally hear your point about, um, you know, everybody getting to benefit from the hard work and investment that Deerfield and the other CPHS towns made in, in standing up that capacity to even order a vaccine and know how to bill for it, you know. Um, so uh, happy to talk more about that. You know, and and bring that back to Linda. Are we um, moving forward with the contract? I guess I'd like to see it in writing, more in writing, on this. You know, to to be assured that we're really getting the discount. I mean, this is if you we're using very low per square footage. You know, we need that office. I know, well, and so. I'm if sure if, they could find another spot if yeah i guess i i guess just to check in about the office yeah. i mean we have an office at the council right. of governments also you don't have to host this nursing Correct. program here I this is largely the people of to do that but if yeah. we want to find another use for that spot that that's fine absolutely well i i'd like to see what we're getting in credit for it and then we can decide whether it's to our benefit to keep it or okay. to use it ourselves that that really was what i'm concerned about for because again this is a three-year contract so you you know we have to make this is a three-year decision mm -hmm. are we giving this up space up is it worth it you know that okay. kind of thing um our next schedule meeting is the 22nd do you think you might be able to have some numbers by then sure i mean yeah. and because i i, I urgently right. want you to make this decision before july 1st so yeah. that you Okay. have a nursing program <laughs> you know? yeah. so um, yeah of course absolutely great okay thank you sure if you could give us the information beforehand that would be of great course too. yeah yeah i'll send it along and, and, and i'll show it i will revise your contract such that it describes what that is yes okay. um because yours is the only one obviously who has that discount right. so the template it's not in there that's right yeah Okay. Okay. Well, thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Thank, thank you very much. I sure. really appreciate you coming yeah. all the Tre way down. Trevor, here's your oh. back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, have a great, have a great night. night. You too. Congratulations on being back great together to again. Great to see you again. Thank yeah, you. In person. Good. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda will be uh, select board reports and announcements. We don't have any uh, minutes. No, I. I well, I would just, I just want to state how wonderful it was to see all our seniors together today at the uh, senior picnic. I know. I must have just missed you. Yeah. I, I had a, Did you come in after? Yeah. yeah. I had a webinar and a yep. meeting beforehand. Just to see our seniors together and enjoying some music and meals day. together on a gorgeous day. It was just, it felt like we're getting around this corner and coming back. And um, I just want to thank everybody that put that together. It looked really great. And um it's just really fun, fun to be a part of that. Um, we have a, a, a summer co concert. Yes. Uh, do you want to talk about that, or do you, I got it here? If you, oh, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Here's a summer concert. Yeah. You could just announce those, maybe. For some reason, it's under the board of health, but um, we could yeah. do that under the select board. Okay. You want to? Yeah. So. Do you want to do it? No, sure. So um, I think they can hear you better. Okay. The Deerfield Recreation uh, Department is putting on summer concerts again. We took a hiatus last year, but um, we had a couple here and there outside towards the end. But um, this year, July 9th, TJ and the Peepers. And these, these will all take place. Um, I'll give you the dates, but they take place from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in Memorial Field, right out back of the town hall here, 8 Conway Street behind the town hall. Please social distance uh, and wear face masks if needed. And um, parking on North Main Street and in front of Town Hall, no parking behind Town Hall. So there's other, other areas to do that. But July 9th is TJ and the Peepers. July 16th is Mick, uh, Mick and Vic. July 23rd is John Corbett, uh, local. And um, July 30th is Chicken Wire. So that should be, <laughs> those should be fun, fun shows and I know uh, Sue Antonellis is really excited to get that program up and running again and 
get people out celebrating and dancing. Trevor? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, I know. It's on the but screen, not, in, not in the room. All right. I may have to, to work with you guys on something electronically. That's why I'm in we my do. office. So one question that Sue had about the concert was generally it was rain or shine. But if there was inclement weather, she asked if she would be able to use the town hall because yep. now she's behind, she's located them behind the town hall and memorial field. Yep. I, I don't have an issue with it, but I don't know how anyone else gave us. Um, I don't, it depends on the, how, no, how many people being in here, because we're going to have so many electronics set up and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, we're going to have a problem flipping the town hall over. And yeah, because we have the foot clinic still in here. You know, we all know New England weather is very consistent, so we can count on it. But um, <laughs> it, uh, it's the, you know, there isn't a lot of space it, in here right you, now. You, is that tent? See, the way the town, this is set up right now, uh, there's no room for a concert. Right. Um, the, the tent is being, I, I think the tent's being left up, right, Casey? Um, I don't Waitley's, know. Waylon's yeah. going to let us use it. it well, that's, not that's not Waitley's tent. That's not Waitley's anymore. That one's That's Hilltown oh. tents. Tent, oh, okay. Specifically well, for the senior center. All yeah. right. Well, the weights from what um, Bob Walden, I mean, the weights there will hold that tent down in, in clement weather. So I would say so. Yes. They're like half a I know. barrel of cement. So, um, so maybe I should have uh, Sue talk to Dick or Jennifer or both. Yeah. Yeah. We should, well, I think we need to work on that a little bit just because of our space in here with the foot clinic and the way we're going to have to set up our meetings. It might be tight to do a concert in here. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time or not on Slackman's comments, Casey, but uh, on uh, signing contracts. You want to, we want to bring that up right now. That's up to you. If you want me, if you want me to, I can. Well, I, if this is appropriate time, I'll bring it up. Okay. The, um, one of the issues we had at town meeting was an unpaid bill. Three unpaid so, bills. Three unpaid bills. Uh, but it was all, the, three of them were unpaid because of the controversy over one of them. Um, we have to remind all the committees within the town of Deerfield, they are not authorized to sign contracts without approval of the board of select, the select board or the town administrator. So we've got to make sure, so we know that there's, so if they're signing a contract that money's involved, that the money is there. And that's what happened on uh, one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got to make sure that we're, you know, this board and our office is well aware of what's going on before any contract is signed. And the issue is because it affects our future contracts. If we're not, you know, if we're viewed as not being good for our money and good for our word that when they sign a contract with us, they're actually going to get paid for their work. You know, we, we may not get a favorable price on stuff. It just, you know, it really, it that, that was a huge mistake. So um, we really, you know, Deerfield has to pay for its bills. And I understand we need to deal with who said what and when and, and all, but at the end of the day, it's our word that we're going to take care of our bills for our, for the people who do, do business with the town. So we got to sort that out, but we just need to make sure that when somebody signs a contract that we can control that and make sure that the money gets chased in the year. It's different than any, like your household, you can pay a bill next year if they'll let you. With a town, you have to pay it in the year it's done. You don't have a choice um, or you have to go to town meeting and get approval. And then if you don't get approval, people are out money for work served and it just isn't right. So, may I clarify? Yes. So, statutorily, the contract signatories are usually the select board and the town administrator through the authority of, chief of procurement and authority designated by the board. 
in the case of Deerfield, there is an authorization that goes through town meeting to allow the board of assessors to sign contracts as well. So any that statutory authority and the bylaw author or the town meeting authority really designates who should be contracting for any services. And so because of the situation that happened, I think it makes sense to reiterate that all contracts should come through the office and either be approved by the select board or approved by the town administrator based on what the select board delegates as a contract amount that can be authorized by me uh, as, as a certified procurement officer. That would be my suggestion because this is a situation where the money should have been in our coffers before the contract amendment was signed and it wasn't followed up on. And so we, we need to limit any further instances of that in the best way possible. And, you know, another reason to make sure we're paying our bills is uh, it affects the way we borrow money. And thanks to Barb and her office, we've just got the highest rating on, in Moody's for borrowing money. So mm -hmm. that puts us in a very good position. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunately, you know, it may not have been well explained at the meeting, but we are legally obligated to pay these three bills one way or the other. We can't just say, no, we're not gonna pay it. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, we may not like what it's being paid for. Uh, there's a number of things in town that we pay for that doesn't make much sense. <laughs> but you know, once the contract's signed, we're legally obligated to do it. So, Speaking of contracts and signing them um, before we have money, um, I just want to, under select board announcements about the Deerfield Academy portion of the sewer line project for replacement. We got bids back. Um, I can't sign anything until we have money in our account to, before we award any bids, but we are gonna, you know, we got some favorable bids back to get going on the project less than we anticipated. So that's really good. Um, I'm talking with Deerfield Academy and we should have funding hopefully by next week. So I'm hoping by next meeting we could sign contracts to award the bids to move forward because we um, can't award until we have the money. Okay, I was just going to say we could vote positive with with the stipulation that the money arrives in the account. Yeah, we just can't sign the contract. So as long as we're moving forward for these, and we will, uh, we just can't award them yet until um, I just got these today. So um, these are is one for the open trench and one is for the. Um, you know, kind of replacing in place. So I'll, I'll get all this. I just want to mention that these came in today, uh, working with Deerfield Academy. Keith's been away on vacation, he's back. So we're gonna meet up this week and then um, we'll have funding in the account, Barbara will set up and then we can award the bids and move okay. forward to keep on schedule, but you I'll keep we'll you to, Yeah, I was gonna say we could yes. still post a meeting if- Yes. We need to just I think sign we're it. good by the 22nd. Okay. So as long as right. we're, you know, we can sign that. I just want to keep everybody in the loop on what's going on with that project because we're trying to push it through fast to get it built before all the kids come back okay. so that we can get it paid for, for all of it paid for by Deerfield Academy, which is a huge donation to the town. So okay. for that one section. So that's that. I'll bring more info on the 22nd and okay. hopefully we can sign those contracts then. Any board of health announcements? Um, I just want to mention that um, the Delta variant, which used to be named the India variant, they're trying to get away from countries of origin so yep. people don't think about it. So it has now been renamed the Delta variant. It is a um, DPH is has listed it now as a um, variant of concern. There is a, there is about 150 cases circulating through Massachusetts currently. And that is, you know, very conservative number just because, you know, they don't test every everyone. everyone. Just it's like just random. Yep. But they have at least 150 cases. It's very, very transmissible. So again, people should just be careful of um, aerosol buildup. Obviously, and I will say this over and over again, the, the vaccines are really worth getting. If you haven't gotten mm -hmm. vaccinated, they're extraordinary. 
They're very, very effective. But um, people, there are people that are not vaccinated. And, and, they, they, children and our children um, under 12 are our group that is not vaccinated yet. And we need to be remain very, very careful of, of that group. My, my grandchildren are not age eligible. And as a result, I am extremely careful. This is you know, mm -hmm. I know you're both vaccinated because you came through and got your shot. <laughs> you so watched it. I watched it. So <laughs> I'm, I know you're okay. And I happen to know that the ladies in the audiences are okay. But, you know, it, it makes me nervous. Um, and I was, even Maybe though the sun know, came, we don't know. right, the sun came out and it was very hot, um, you know, at town meeting. But I can't say thank you enough for everyone that was willing to work through the town meeting and have it outside because, you know, being in an auditorium contained with all those people um, mm -hmm. was a little concerning, you know, and, and that's what people need to do. You have to remember we had no flu circulating last year. And the reason why is because people were so careful with COVID. Mm -hmm. So we need to maintain that kind of, um, you it's know, okay wash your hands and, you know, social distance from your groups and, mm -hmm. you know, be normal, but be just smart. be careful and, and, and be outside as much as possible. And the one thing I will say is that our Tilton library is still requiring masks inside. Our town hall is not, I mean, you're more than welcome to wear them. We're happy to have that. But the Tilton library is still requiring masks because our children, you know, the children's library <laughs> downstairs and children in there. And they, again, they don't have the ability to go get a vaccine like all of us have been able to. So that'll, I think, continue. Casey, you could answer that, but I think that Candace is still instituting that policy for a while, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Um, we had a very successful second shot clinic at Frontier uh, for our 12 to 16 year olds. And um, as soon as possible, as soon as the trials are done and there is emergency approval for Pfizer for the under 12, we'll be doing clinics. Um, I'm hoping that they'll be done before school starts, but yeah. it does look like it's gonna be sometime in the fall. So yep. um, we're gonna do it as soon as possible. The good news is uh, antibodies are still up in people that have had our vac uh, the vaccines, no matter all three of them actually. So there will not be a um, booster in the fall, which is kind of exciting. Yeah, that's So helpful. that's being pushed off at least till the spring. So um, that's wonderful. So, um, and the guidelines for the schools are not out. They probably won't be out until August, um, but the schools will be open yep. and our school will be open. Yep. So um, we did a very good job. The working with the school administration was fabulous and they were excellent and we kept the kids safe and we're gonna do that again in the fall. Lastly, for Board of Health, um, you know, we are surveilling mosquitoes at the yes. moment. I don't, I have not seen a test result yet, but they should be coming fairly soon. This week, um, this week, Thursday is the uh, mail-in day. And, and so we should have Friday, we'll have test results. Usually yes. there's no disease load until around 4th of July. Yep. Last year was the first year in 11 years that we had no West Nile in the town of Deerfield for the whole summer. So right. um, the good news is we're out of a drought. The bad news is we get more mosquitoes when we're out of a drought, but um, so far the numbers that are being trapped are lower. And so, and again, as Trevor said, the test results for the disease load will be out at the end of the week for this week. And a lot of ticks, so still keep uh, permitting on and spray. Tickreport.com, if you have a pull a tick off yourself, it's really important to get to know what's that disease is being carried. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And we have zero COVID cases in Deerfield, right? That's yes. right. Second we, week of zero COVID cases. We only have three in the county. It's in one household. So that's, you know, that's contained. Um, it's the first time in many, many weeks that we've not seen. But this is the second week that second we've week had in no Deerfield, Deerfield no cases Deerfield. in the whole time. And um, and only three in the in the whole county. So that we're, we're doing very good. And uh, yeah. it's great. The, uh, as Phoebe uh, mentioned earlier, uh, Deerfield is one of the highest vaccinated towns in the Commonwealth. Yeah. Um, 
And a lot of that credit goes to Carolyn. Yes, it does. Wow. Yep. She has been a diehard on getting, you know, thankfully for us, it got her off, got her off mosquitoes for a short time. <laughs> but um, <laughs> now mosquitoes is a hot topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that's coming back. It's all cyclical. <laughs> and a, an occasional tick. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, it's Deerfield <laughs> stepped up. Yeah. And it's, um, I couldn't be happier. So, yep. Very much. So. We did have a good contact tracing team. Mm -hmm. I handled the ones that did not respond or did not um, cooperate. You didn't and, want Carolyn coming to your door. No, and I did. I, <laughs> I know you did. Door. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it worked out really well we were able to contact trace usually within three hours. And that was probably one of the fastest turnaround times in the whole state. Yeah. So I am really proud of everybody working really hard together. Yep. Okay, anything else? No. Okay, uh, next thing on our agenda, discussion decision items. Do we have a really to make this is just informational on the yeah, migration? The yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're going, they're doing great. They had one shipment of old, I think it was Kenwood or Motorola that came, they shipped back. I think, I'm not sure if they got the new ones yet, but they're coming pretty quick. They're, they're Actually, turning that the stuff. Ones, the truck is pulling in. Oh, great. Today. Yeah. So. so they, and this is just for the people to understand Comier's uh, migration and the decommissioning. Um, so for many, many years, the county, run by FERCOG has had emergency towers and those were run off 400 megahertz. The new um, technology is 800 megahertz and that's what the state police use. And um, thank goodness to John Pachurik and FERCOG and Linda and a lot of people worked together to get Franklin County, one of the first counties in the, in the state to get switched over. And we've gotten, a, I forget, is it a million, million dollar grant? Yes. For new radios. Actually, it works out to be more than a Yeah, million. I was going to say, it's more than a million dollars. So all the radios, so all your police, your fire. So when they pull up on a, on a scene, or if they go down into a basement, they have repeaters in the vehicle and you can stay in contact. The biggest problem in 9-11 was you could not, when those buildings came down, you couldn't reach anybody. There was, you know, towers went down. The way the radios were, you couldn't have any contact. So if we have something going on now, or you know, with our topography or the buildings that you're in, you have a lot better, a lot clearer, crisper contact um, and communication with first responders. So that um, what's happening is those towers are being decommissioned, but before that happens, all the new towers are going up and all the new radios are switching to 800. And so John Pachurk, Chief Pachurk has been working on that and, and has a great team from FERCOG that are uh, reprogramming all the ones for all the fire and police districts and EMS in all Franklin County. So that is uh, moving along very well when I talked to them last, except for a snap blue again, an old radio yep. came instead so of a new. Three but, pallets of old radios. Yeah, so they caught that and, and swapped that around pretty quick. So um, it's really great. It's great news and we'll be, we'll be in a lot better position in, in a couple of weeks. Give you an idea of the improvement of communications. Uh, in the 70s, when I was a police officer in town, we actually had three different radios in the cruisers. We had the county, we had the fire, and we had state police. Yeah. No, and it was always fun when all three of them were talking at the same time. Yeah. And now they're all on one. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's just, all dispatched. Uh, well, the 800 is more efficient and yeah. is more effective in reaching uh, some of the dead spaces. So, yeah. and, and, and Dave, uh, down in your area, we could never talk on the radios because there's a dead space. And then the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just it, it's just a much better system. And then yeah. the, the infrastructure, the towers are 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 run by the state police. So, um, you know, the, we've had to pay for the maintenance through a contract with FERCOG every year. On, you know, tower goes down the technology is so old. So all of that's going to get decommissioned and, and, you know, taken out of service. And so we won't have that huge liability. Eventually we'll pay, I'm sure at some point, because nothing's free forever, but at least this, this grant that was 
received to get us moved over to that. Again, you know, we're one of the first, and I think Barnstable as well, uh, county, and then the rest of the counties will fill out across the state. But um, great advocacy by, by our chief and for club to do that. So that's it on that. Great advocacy on the part of our police chief. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he put a lot, a lot of personal time in yes, there. Yes, he did. He did, and he's doing a lot of the programming, and it's just an amazing effort on his part, and everybody that's helping him, and I know there's a lot of staff in his office doing that as well. Yep. It's thousands and thousands of dollars of savings to the town of Deerfield alone. Yep. I, uh, tens of thousands. Yeah, a lot. So it's a lot of money. ARPA? Um, Casey, updates on ARPA? Sorry, I was muted. So we have received $261,200, which is the first tranche of funds to be sent directly to the town. There will be two tranches. We'll receive one tranche this year and one tranche next year. There's additional funds, and we're still trying to, to sort through this, but there are other funds that are distributed through the abolished county. So if, keep in mind, Franklin County is an abolished county. So there was special guidance that had to be created for this. The full outline of that guidance is not available yet, but the way it's been explained is the other, alloc the other funds to be allocated to the town will be done on a per capita basis, but we don't know how that's gonna play out yet. Yeah, and I'm, it's I'm all still over, over. It's still over five hundred thousand, though, isn't it? Well, it is. It, if you look at the allocation oh, no, through the county and the payments. town, it is. Well, oh. the first payment's two fifty one. The second payment's two something. So no, no, no. But then we get that. We get the at the end of the year, we're going to get the other half of that. We only get from this. where though? Is no. my question. Well, we're supposed to get a million. It was a million two, right, Casey? No, originally it was um, one, I don't four, think right? it's going to be a million too. I think it's going to be right around just under a million. Okay. So it's been reduced. So how, how come it's been reduced? Where's the money going? Yes. It was an okay. estimate. Here. <laughs> All right. We get, we got to follow it up to make sure we get yes, at least 500,000 right now. That well, wherever... no, what we're getting. So there's two different things here. There's the allocation directly to the town, which is the 522,000. The, al the other allocation went through the abolished counties because that was the function that Treasury designated based on de um, the yeah, Commonwealth's abolishment of several counties. That's what I mean. I just, I want to, I want to. So we're waiting to see how it's going to come through. Yep. All right. You need to track it down because it's, it's another couple hundred thousand at least. Well, we need to get more guidance from Treasury and DLS. That's what we're waiting for. Yep. Okay. Do they have any more specific guidelines on the usage of the money? No, it's still very basic. The same things that we've heard in the past uh, two weeks, Carolyn. I know I asked you about the FEMA today. You had no update on that. Um, did you nope. have left? Do you have anything left over on the CARES Act? Uh, uh, we, we do not because our CARES Act money is tied directly to our FEMA money. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> FEMA takes forever. I know. All right. I just am worried. I don't want to run out of time. We have till October for the CARES Act. Yeah. Or is yeah. it October or is October. it October? And then we have FEMA money coming in. Do you think the FEMA is going to come in before October? I really can't say. I know that the COGS experience really a lot of delays and, and their experience helped me figure out what we could expect, but our delay has been longer. Their delay, they said was six to nine months. We put our first request in back in October. So it's been significantly delayed. Um, I'd like us to think about um, expenditures that are allowed under ARPA that also are uh, allowed under CARES Act so that if we spend any money on ARPA money, that we spend that money and that if it comes in um, and we get the FEMA, you know, there's, it frees up CARES Act money, then those, those items that we've spent or we appropriated ARPA money for, we end up using CARES Act money for. Um, we can try, there's different allowances under both programs. I know, but 
we're not allowed to spend unless we have the money in the bank. All I'm saying is let, let's have priorities that maybe we could be sweeping up the end of the CARES Act money on, on the ARPA money first, the first expenditures, so that when we actually go pay the bill, the CARES Act money might be freed up and we could you know, put it under the CARES Act and not use ARPA money initially, okay? Okay, I'll discuss that with um, Brenda. Just, just to keep that in mind, because we don't want to leave any CARES Act money on the table, and we don't know what our FEMA reimbursement is going to be. Um, so we, we want to make sure that our money, we're, we're spending the money as fast, you know, in appropriate ways. And, and as the money ages, we get the oldest money first, is, I guess is the best way to say it. Because these programs are so obnoxious to report. Okay, as long as you're aware of that, Casey. Okay, anything else down. on Ar ARPA? And, and, and it's, I guess there was a question on what ARPA stands for. I think that was- Yes, it's, it's the Recovery it's Act. Recovery Act. Yes, American. I'm just trying to, it's hard to multitask. Type in I notes and type into the chat at the same time. <laughs> it's okay, thank you. I think Lily actually answered that. To yep. the person. She did. So. Okay, next thing on our agenda, town-wide shredding event. Is that all this was a question Carolyn had posed. Um, well, someone had emailed me and uh, I, I vaguely remember we had a shredding event and they wanted to know if we could have another shredding event at the transfer station. So I didn't know if you could talk to Janamine and try to get that set up. I I, I can't recall was. having a shredder. Wasn't it promoted by somebody last time? I'm trying to think of what it was. I don't remember because you know I burn all my stuff in the wood stove. <laughs> in the You're winter. the carbon footprint. Uh, yeah, I Great. know. No. I, you know, I saved my stuff to start Well, they've got fires. so much hemp going around her house that <laughs> it eats up the garbage. <laughs> well, um, we can look into that. I just, I'll, I'll help. I'll try to help figure that out. I think. Um, do you remember that? I can look it up in my stuff. I think I can go okay. back and look. Um, I, I don't remember it that much. I mean, I vaguely remember. I think it was it. put on by somebody and not paid for by the town. It wasn't a town expenditure because we wouldn't spend our town money to do that but no but that might be uh, but it might Jana be Bean might do it she, yeah right she so might have something. something there was something something about that i know somebody else did it and promoted yeah. it okay so we'll try to apply she might see if find I some kind of little grant for that right okay okay uh next thing is the uh fiscal year 2021 second sewer commitment for approval um, right. that's not in our packet case I, I should I have one here if you need. Um it should be I actually there saw should be just one I saw it. sheet and one sheet that looked like that. Um, um the only the only question I had, what is this in, um what was last year's Casey at this time? Do you remember? I don't remember. I can try to look at I have to go back and look at that too. Does it seem like it's in, in the ballpark? Well, it's gonna be more because we're you know we're doing we're starting. Oh no, we're right collecting now. more money, but yeah. I mean the usage. Oh, 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 usage. Um, I could go look at that, but I don't have no, it right in front right. of me. No, it doesn't matter. Yep. I, I don't I, have I, that in front of me either. So I'll, I'll read this message uh, to us um, from the collector treasurer, um, June uh, 14th, 2021, uh, utility billing 2021 commitment number two. You are hereby authorized to collect from 400 and, excuse me, from 946 bills named on the commitment uh, with the amount set against their respective names, amounting in the aggregate of 597,200, five, uh, let's see, two, let me just make $205. Sure. Yeah, $205 to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report such of such payment to the town accountant. So um, the sewer services, uh, it looks like 94, thousand six hundred um service and then the sewer was five hundred and two six oh five fifteen um for a total of five hundred and ninety seven thousand two hundred and five dollars and fifteen cents so i'll make a motion to approve that 
I'll second that. Mm. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. The sewer consumption was 34,504,664. Yeah. Okay. Um, while we're talking sewer, um, this last couple of days, we had a issue with our pump station on Cap Lathrop um, with articles being flushed down the system that are clogging our pumps. Um, this has been a problem that's been going on for a while. And it's getting to the point where some individuals neglect is compromising the possibility of sewage back up into a lot of homes. Um, and I don't know what the logistics are of it, but if we may have to start investigating either people put filters on their outgoing sewer systems or they have uh, holding tanks installed before it hits our system um, because we can't keep on going the way it is. I want to thank Kevin for going door to door um, yeah. on, on Captain Lathrop and just trying to educate people again. And it, it, could, it can be um, not malicious, but just obviously some someone who's not educated yet on the amount of wear and tear it does. Uh, you know, Kevin, and the crew had to go out at one in the morning this week and, and pull an article of clothing out from the pump. Now the pump we put in is a shredder pump because you know all the wipes that people are putting down just get clogged up. So we have a, a pump system at the pump station that um, shreds stuff, but it can't shred articles of clothing and they get wrapped around the pump and then everything freezes up and sewage will back up into people's houses. Um, so please um, don't flush anything, throw it in the trash if you can do that. Um, so I know we had a, a letter wrote, written up and Kevin tried to go door to door and, and educate everybody on what's going on there and, and the seriousness of it because it's costing you know a lot of money. We spent over 50,000 to put that new pump in and um, it, it, it's a lot of money um, just by mistake. So if people could please try to save our sewers. You know, we're spending 19 million bucks right now on upgrading it. We don't oh. want to spend more, so please. Um, One thing that I would say is Jennifer and Kevin work together to outline some of the costs for each event, as well as what it would cost to replace the pumps mm -hmm. and, and provide pictures so people understood. And Kevin uh, did a great job. They both did a great job, but Kevin had to go out and do all the door knocking. Yeah. Yep, so we appreciate that work. And um, hopefully people are educated now and we'll stop seeing that happen. So, yeah, we had a major issue with disposable wipes for quite a while, but you know, now with articles of clothing being flushed as well. Um, thousands of dollars of damage. Yeah. I know some of us have children that are intrigued by what they can flush down the toilet, but um, it, uh, so we've got to be cognizant of that. So, and that that street in particular is our only pump station. So you know, most areas everything's gravity fed. Um, that street is kind of lower. It has a dip in it. So the only way you can get the sewage out to the main collection system is through a pump station, which you know that literally pumps it out to the main street. Um, and so it's very susceptible because it's it's it catches everything on that one street and it's got to lift it up and get it in. So if something gets stuck up in that um, in that pump, it just backs everything right up up the street. So I don't want to be the first one <laughs> on that street. I'll tell you that. No, it'll, it'll come right. Originally, that pump station was put in to handle four houses. Yeah, there's a lot more houses there now. Now the houses go right up to the side of the mountain. So there's a lot of houses there. So. Okay. Okay. FERCA Green Communities Technical Assistance MOU. Casey, do we have a recommendation from the um, Energy Committee? Sorry. This is the MOU that we work with the COG on to support the Green Communities grant activities, the administrative one. There's really only one change in it because the state grant doesn't allow us to 
um, charge procurement costs in this round. So we have to, we may have to pay a small amount for procurement for the street lights okay. um, transition. Otherwise it's the same contract that provides the grant writing support, the reporting support, and there's other tasks that our contacts up at the COG help us with, like the streetlight audit uh, RFP. And this is for a total of four thousand um, dollars, and that provides all the all of the assistance with the grant application preparation, assistance with the annual report, which needs to be done in preparation, um, and assist with incorporating regional school districts into existing communities, uh, energy baselines, and reduction plans for the purpose of participating in the green communities program. And this has been a wonderful program. Uh, the green communities program has been. Um, it's just been wonderful. We've, we've got at the elementary school, we had new boilers put in and lighting uh, to reduce the energy there. And, um, and we were awarded uh, to money to change over our street lights from uh, regular incandescent to a um, or fluorescent to an LED, which is going to save us a long, a lot of money in the long term. And that was our biggest kind of obstacle was getting money to do the street light inventory and purchasing back the lights because you have to buy the lights that are there now and then buy LED lights uh, because the lights aren't ours. Um, they're, they're Eversource, so we have to purchase them from Eversource and then uh, put up LED lights. So this is, I think it's well worth the money to, to do all that work. Um, it's a lot, a lot of work to do and it's a great program. So I make a motion to support the contract. I think that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Callum Lutz. Aye, Dave Wolfer. Motion carried 300. Zero, zero. I guess we have to do that still. Do we? Have what? to do that to vote. Name, name, our names. Oh, then. yeah, well, right, we're right. We're on. Um, we're in personnel. Yeah. I know. But yes, it doesn't hurt. I yeah. Oh, okay. It's going to be harder for us to go undercover now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing is confirmed standard tag sale policy after COVID-19. I think we already lit, we already loosened it up, Casey. Pretty much. What's the I, I, I don't understand. We didn't we confirm mean. that we were going back to the standard tag sale policy. So we Which need to do that now that the governor's eliminated the emergency order for certain so, things. So you're talking about um, people coming in and pulling a permit for five bucks, right? Correct. Because we waived that during COVID. Correct. Correct. So we don't want people in. Um, I don't know if we still, I mean, that's, I think it's still important to have, you know, from a safety point of view for the police to know where the tag sales are every weekend, but I don't know. How do you feel about having them come in? People come in. I, I People are coming in now. Do you want to wait? They're paying their bills. bills. If this is another one of those transition out of COVID tasks. I know. Do you think it's worth doing still? Do you think it's worth having people come in? Do you want the hassle? Or do you want us to just wave it for a few more months? I think that's... That's a miscellaneous revenue source. And it does, there's still work that goes on in here to cover those tasks because we're still taking we're addresses still and permit. recording those, those permits. So I guess if we still have to do the work and get the permit, we should try to cover some of the cost of that. All right. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. Okay. I make a motion we move back to standard tag sale policy. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Nass. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Okay, next thing on the agenda fiscal year 2022 appointments. Um, were we going to hold off on the police until next week? That would be my recommendation. Okay. okay. What do you think, Case? I think that's up to you guys. Um, we have, we've been chasing appointments. I know John struggled with putting this through because he was working on implementation of different activities in his office and trying to get those radios out the door. 
but he did give us the, that information. So um, if you wanted to hold off, I, I do know that we are gonna need to move on them before the 30th if we can. Um, can why don't we um, move until the 22nd and then you can resolve um, with John what uh, any issues he has, okay? Okay. Um, is that okay? With you both? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if that gives some time to do that, sure. We have, um, there was a suggestion and- uh, Okay, um, fine. So I think it can be sorted out by Tuesday. All right, sounds good. I have it. And just so the townspeople are aware, our chief has come up with some figures of what this uh, new police reform act is gonna cost the town of Deerfield. Basically it's an unfunded mandate that's gonna cost Deerfield about $55,000. Um, I attended a um, MMA leadership meeting to the webinar today, uh, 12 to 1, and it was about um, the police reform bill, and um, I have, I got those figures from John, and I will feel, make forward them on for us as a town of Deerfield, but um, I think the recommendation or the feeling of the general consensus of the webinar of people that were participating um, we need to get moving on this and complain. We, we as a select board association had gotten Franklin select board association had gotten together and we had put together a meeting in March to address this. And then we got pushback from our legislators and we canceled it. And they said, okay, they're going to do something. Well, guess what? Nothing has happened. Well, so I think let me we just should answer that a little bit. I, I had saw somewhere in an email, either from Joe Comerford or somewhere that, that it, or Natalie, that they had put a million dollars into the thing, but that's really not going to address. That's a million dollars for the entire community, the entire well, state. I mean, that's why I think they're collecting the information. But I mean, Deerfield also, alone is fifty five thousand dollars potentially. I also had a meeting today, starting the with the Western Massachusetts Select Boards Association with MMA, and you know. Um, couple of select board members in the planning commission for Berkshire and um, Pioneer Valley and Burkhog, Linda was on it. And I mentioned this subject to be one of the discussions that are October 2nd for county select meetings. So we're, we're scheduling that. I mean, that we do we pick that date for sure? We pick that date for sure, the second. Okay. Did you have something going on the second? No, no, no. I'm okay. just gonna put it in yeah. the calendar yeah, right away. Yeah, that's, and we're trying we, for- We need to have- for East Hampton High School because they have a new auditorium okay. and then some breakout rooms. So okay. we're looking at um, looking at that. And, and so I brought up the police issue for one of the topics because it's still very much, you know, I, I said that we had this all set to go and then we were told to back off because the legislature was going to deal with something. And, and I, I, again, I'm not really sure what, what the answer was. Um, but obviously- Well, it's just not happening. Yeah. And uh, it seemed I don't know like- if it's passed at all either, so- well, um, this is, Just, the problem is it's this affects um, July first, right? And and all this this what this does is take money away from I think important training, and you know I mean we had training with kids with autism, we had kids you know um, different other disabilities, um, deaf people, mm -hmm. and I mean there was a, lots of good trainings going on that uh, you know, I was only per halfway aware of, but our police have been doing very good trainings and this sucks up money away from, I feel like community policing training, um, just, just to meet the state mandates that. So um, just for point of interest, the Commonwealth is saying they're gonna put a million dollars towards us. Yeah. And if we consider Deerfield an average sized town within the Commonwealth, which it is not, and we're spending fifty five thousand. That's nineteen million three hundred five thousand dollars throughout the Commonwealth. Mm. If each town in the state got the same amount of money, obviously Boston, Springfield, Worcester are going to get a little bit more than we would. Right. Yep. So, I, I'm just saying that it was yeah very discouraging listening to what people were faced with, and and it didn't. The what intent mean? is good. Of course it is. It needs to be there what people did is they rushed forward and they didn't think of the consequences and, and therefore money is being directed away 
from I think meaningful good training to you know and just wind up with communities without police because yeah. you, you need part timers I know to fill out your roster because you can't afford it otherwise. So. Yep. Okay. And you know, Deerfield is fairly fortunate because you know our police force stays fairly consistent throughout the year. Um, I vacation usually down in Eastern. They put on 35 officers during the summer. Yeah. Under these new regulations, they're not going to be able to afford to put anybody on. That's a lot. And that's, and that's just one small community down in that area. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay. Okay. I'm done complaining. Done complaining? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Can we hold you to that? Yeah. <laughs> I spent an hour listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I put my time in. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to do this case? Go through each name? Yep. She's, She's muted. muted. I think, is that how you normally do it? Yeah, we normally go down the list and just list the name and and then at the end, we take a vote and we can hold on any kind of like our omnibus budget. <laughs> okay. We'll hold any, we'll hold them. Um, can we, could we do the EMS first? Yep. I think I have that in the back here. It's in the back. If um, Normally we do the police and the EMS first. Yep. Let's do that. Um, since we're putting off the police till next Tuesday, let's do the EMS today and then we don't have to worry about it. Do you want me to read them or somebody else? I'm not, oh, I'm going to murder some names here. So, <laughs> you're not the only one. Yeah, I All think right. you so, have a good, you're, I think choice. I could do well with Zachary Smith, but yes, yeah, the rest yeah, of them, the gonna... rest I may have a trouble with. So, yeah. uh, full time, this is South County EMS appointments and pay rates, um, FY22 annual appointment. So, these are full time officers, would be uh, Timothy Drumgool. Teresa Emerson, April Fernandez, Aliyah uh, Kosmal, Anthony Lazinski, Gary Ponce, Zachary Smith, Alicia Toya, David Zamoyski. Uh, I, se I second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Aye, Carolyn Ness. So per diem, uh, these are a list of people that fill in different sections. So um, I'll start Zachary uh, Bastioni, uh, Sue Ellen Bellows, Samuel Broder, Abigail Candy, Leah uh, Doolittle, Eric Jungle, uh, Carly Easton, Hannah uh, Esteen, Eric Fitzgerald, Mason Jenkins, Louise Kelly, William Kimball, Adam Martin, Lori McComb, Yvonne Marino, Nair uh, Ragoza, Philip Snow, Robert Swayze, Mark Tremblay, Jonathan uh, Vant, Vant Land, and uh, Ahad Yildiz. Um, I second that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the EMS people. It's wonderful. Yep, they do a wonderful job. So, um, these are FY22 appointments. If we have any issues, just blurt out a name. So, um, these are terms on this page expiring 2022. So, ADA coordinator is Casey Warren. This is our ad hoc senior housing committee, Haley Dwight chair, Carolyn Shores Ness, Deborah Darling Raphael, uh, Raphael, uh, and Annalie uh, Wolfcool. Ad hoc town common committee, Trevor McDaniel, Richard A. Benson, um, Gregory Franceschi, Melissa Hale, Catherine Hart, Pam Hodgkins, Catherine Lawless, and Denise Schwartz. Um, Agricultural Commission, Jay Savage. And I believe there's more openings if people wanted to serve on the Ag Committee. There's, there's, and, and I hope that at some point 
that happens. Um, oh, we got to get active again. We need, do need to get active. We have a great farmers and love to support them and figure out what we can do. Um, Board of Health Agents, Richard Kalshevsky, Charles Konecki is our special health agent, Kevin uh, Scarborough, Zachary Smith, David Zamoyski, Valerie Bird, Alex White. And can you give me an update on who Alex White is? I don't yes, know him. he's a tough student. He's worked for um, Foothills um, this past year. And he, uh, Dick, he, we, he was re uh, recommended um, to Dick by a couple different people, um, Valerie and Foothills people. And so um, Dick and I interviewed him on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, this yesterday. And um, he's a tough student. So he's getting his master's in public health. He seems really great. He's got um, his food safe certified. He's got some other certifications. He is not a soil um, evaluator. So we were going to start him as a part time, like backup. Valerie um, is, you know, yeah, some of her full, backup. she's our backup mm -hmm. and she's fully certified for everything so she's at 38 out, uh, dollars an hour similar to our other inspectors mm -hmm. because alex is still in school and um is not he's on the list they had stopped doing soil evaluators this past year because of covid yeah. and he's on the list uh top of the list to get started when the state starts up again so he should be soil certified maybe by the end of the summer but um we're just starting him at 30 dollars an hour and um, so he's going to work with Dick as a backup and do food, some food inspections and stuff like that. And um, we potentially may be putting out the hiring process to, uh, you know, transition Dick. Okay, if, when when Dick's ready to retire, yeah. we'll be looking yeah. at yeah. Um, obviously a search. We, and a, yeah, we have to that. search. But, of course. Okay. Right, full time, but right now he's a backup. He's backup. Okay. Yeah. Um, and last is building inspector Robert Walden. So maybe we'll just take a second and a vote on this page. Um, on I'll make way. a second on all the people that you okay. read off. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfman. All right. Um, so burial agent is uh, Barbara Hancock. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee is Casey D. Warren as a non-voting ex officio. Carolyn Shores Nets is the select board rep. Um, Barbara Hancock is a non-voting ex officio. There are two openings um, that would be appointed by the moderator. So we have two vacancies there that the moderator can appoint. Um, Ken Cutterbeck is recommended by the school committee. Jeff Upton recommended by finance committee. Denise Mason recommended by planning board and Francis Skip is recommended by the Board of Assessors. The Community uh, Preservation Committee, we, um, it looks like we're gonna, we have a vacancy recommended by the select board and a vacancy recommended or appointed by the town moderator. Then we have uh, Richard Van Benson from the uh, Historical Commission. There is a vacancy from the planning board. Uh, Charles Shattuck III is recommended by the uh, Board of Assessors. We have a vacancy from the Open Space Committee, and then Recreation Committee is to be determined as well, uh, which member will be serving. Um, and then Tim Hilchi is recommended by the Conservation Commission. So we definitely have some, some vacancies on the common uh, Community Preservation Committee. If people would like to serve, um, that would be great. Um, you know, I, I, I would, um, I think Lee Lee Dwight, was Lee Lee Dwight our, um, our representative last year recommended by the select board i think she was right because she because she's not listed here and i know at town meeting she spoke up and said that she yeah. was um, is, is she, Lee's she, on. she was at least yeah oh maybe. it was the moderator oh she, Lee she Lee was, was appointed Lee's by, by the, the moderator. moderator or us I, I thought we had appointed Lily because she's hey, on Lili. the scene. Hi, Lily. Want to sh shed some light? The moderator. I'm the moderator appointee. Okay, so oh. that's what we just need to put. Okay. Do you remember who was the select board um, appointee? No, I, I mean we've been really missing some members, obviously. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this I don't know that I actually know one. 
it's a very important board and I recommend people, you know, reach out. I mean, obviously we need somebody from planning board and open space um, and, and rec, um, but, you know, we can recommend somebody from the select board uh, to that space. So if somebody is interested, um, they do great work and guide our money that we yeah. all pull in. So, mm -hmm. um, so lastly, the uh, conservation commission, it's a five member board. There are two um, that are up this year, which would be, um, Benjamin uh, Byrne and Peter Law. Okay, I, I second um, all okay. those people we listed. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. So, Council on Aging, we have uh, Marie St. Peters, Sharon Paturik, Ruth Sadowski, Beverly Welcome, Francis York, and Robert J. Decker III. Um, Cultural Council, Olivia Leone, um, and uh, Reba uh, Jean Shaw uh, Pachette. Emergency Management, Lori McComb is the director. John Chirk Jr., Assistant Director. Zach Smith, Assistant Director. Emergency 911 Coordinator is Darren Melnick and William J. Swayze. The Energy Committee, Lori Basada, Irene H. Clancy, Stephen Epper, Eicher, um, Greg Franceschi, David uh, Gilbert Heath, Jay Stryker, Emma Sweetman, Stephen Stephen uh, C. S uh, Sabota, and Reed uh, Predmore. 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 Um, I second all those names. Thank you. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wilson. Fence viewers. Skip Olmstead has been roaming the woods of Deerfield, viewing our fence. <laughs> I think we'll send him out to pasture again. <laughs> so uh, Skip Olmstead, uh, Forest Wardens, Kevin H. Scarborough, uh, William J. Swayze and Derek Melnick, Derek Mel Melnick, um, Franklin County Transit Authority Select Board designee is Robert J. Decker III. Um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments Rep is Trevor McDaniel. For uh, Furcog Electri Electricity Aggregation Project is David Gilbert Keith and Steve Viper. Uh, gas and Plumbing Inspector is Stephen uh, Baranowski and Mark Wendelowski. <clears throat> Historical Commission is Richard A. Benson. Uh, Keeper of the Cemetery Maps is Kevin Scarborough. Keeper of the Town Clock is Robert Willette. Uh, local census director is um, Barbara Hancock, and uh, personnel board is John Peretsky, is the financial uh, finance committee rep. Okay. I second those people. Any further discussion? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Public layers um, Sean uh, Babineau uh, from WT Terminal. Um, these all are actually WT. Uh, WT Terminal, um, Miles Downey, Corey Hamilton, Ryan uh, Pachalis, uh, Ryan Price, Leo, uh, Cook, was that Ciccioni? Ciccioni, I think. Ciccioni? I, yeah. Sounds it. Leo Ciccioni, um, Robert Green, and Janine Savoy. Recreational Committee, uh, Robert J. Eckerman is the chair. Beth Brown, Gretchen, uh, is it Bayeski? Bayeski, uh, Jeff Galley, Eileen um, Skirbiski, Bannock, uh, Rod Warnick, and Rebecca Zoli. Register of Voters is Joanne Carney, uh, Barbara Hancock, Alex Hershander, and William Lino. Representation to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District is Joanne Carney. The SCEMS Board of Oversight is Carolyn Shores Ness, who's our fiscal agent. And David Wolfram is the member, and Matt, Matthew Russo is a member. Make a second on those. Uh, I make a second on all the people listed. Okay. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McCann. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. So surveyor of lumber and wood would be Kevin Scarborough. Superintendent of public works operation is Kevin Scarborough. 
Town Building Advisory Committee is Julie Chalfont, uh, Carol uh, Morrow, John Paturic, Kevin Scarborough, ex officio, and Greg Franceschi. Town Clerk, Treasurer, Collector, Barbara J. Hancock. Town Council, Mead Tallerman and Costa, LLC. Uh, Robinson Donovan, PC. Uh, Tree Warden and Moss Superintendent is Kevin Scarborough. Uh, Veterans Grave Officer is John uh, Sizz. Wiring Inspectors would be uh, Wayne Shaw. Uh, Eric Henderson is the alternate. Workers' Compensation Agent, Employment Compensation Agent, Barbara Hancock uh, and Sarah Kimball is the assistant. Motion on Second that. that. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. So on the Board of Appeals, we have uh, David Potter and Adam Sokolowski. Oh. Oh, it's, I need a second. Um. I'll second it. Second for discussion. Any discussion? <clears throat> I'm going to set the mic up there. Yeah. Good. So first, does the board have any discussions on this? And then we'll open it up to the public. Or do you want to hear from the public first? Okay. Um, if you want to pull up, yeah, come on up. What's the board going to discuss first? Nope, go ahead. We'll okay. take public comment. Great. Everyone can hear us. Um, why don't you identify yourselves? Yeah. Um, just so people know who we're talking to. Tali Stark, Keith Road. And down at the end, uh, Patricia Taylor, Evans Lane. Avon Gibbs at uh, River Road. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks. Thank I just want to start by saying um, thank you guys for all the hard work to keep Deerfield safe during the pandemic. And the fact that we can sit here today is amazing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and the vaccination effort, which I feel honored to have been a part of. Um, so seriously, a really, really sincere thank you to everyone. I know how much work went into that and we really appreciate it. And I think we're all waiting till we can get back to normal and have people participate and you know, be in close proximity. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so we just wanted to take a moment um, to bring to the attention. And I know the uh, select board members, you probably received some letters as well. And I know that um, people have um, also been reaching out to you, but a concern around the appointment of uh, Detective Sergeant Adam uh, Sokolowski onto the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so one of the main concerns, there's really a couple components to this that I just wanted to bring to the board's attention. Um, the first thing is that, um, Deerfield doesn't have a policy for um, appointing town employees to regulatory boards, not just any boards, not the cultural council, things like that, but regulatory boards, boards that will have a real impact on the future of Deerfield and um, also on how business is conducted in Deerfield. Um, so I just wanted to advocate that, you know, Deerfield really needs to employ best practices um, and to do so, not appoint town employees to regulatory boards. Um, state ethics case law indicates that appointing town employees to serve on appointed boards, uh, it creates risks for the municipalities. And it also creates risk for the employees as well, um, where there could be any potential conflicts um, of interest issues or concerns that come up. Um, you know, an example would be it'd be unwise to employ an assistant town administrator to a board or committee um, because that person could be both creating and implementing public policy decisions. Um, you know, such employee appointments also reinforce a real imbalance in power structures within the town municipality. And so that was one of the things that's actually the main concern is that um, we have a detective sergeant who is our second in command in Deerfield a person of considerable authority. 
and then they're serving on a very important regulatory board. Um, many people have come to me as head and chair of Deerfield for Responsible Development, saying that they are deeply concerned about speaking up in public hearings. Um, they, they see that power dynamic and it intimidates them. And so we wanted to bring that to the board's attention when considering um, a reappointment of a board member like this. I do know that other people have stepped up to serve. Um, I know that uh, Kate Lawless has put in a letter of interest. I know there are other people that could definitely do the job and could also eliminate that possibility of a liability for the town. So we've all had a lot of talk about money and about the town you know, having to deal with certain liabilities. And I think we all are in agreement that we just want to mitigate that. And I think one really important road to mitigate that is to not appoint someone of such authority in the town onto a town regulatory board. I think that opens the town up, makes it vulnerable and opens it up to certain litigation that I hope would never come to, but I think it's something that could be avoided. And um, I would definitely advocate that Detective Sergeant Adam Soklaski not be reappointed to the zoning board. Um, there also has been in open meetings, um, Detective Sergeant Sakaleski essentially um, questioning other board members and their motives and their intentions. And a lot of people even said to me, we wanna to speak to this, but we're too afraid to speak to this. I'm on a certain committee and we might have to go to the zoning board and I, I, can't, I can't speak up about this. I can't sign a letter. I'm really concerned, but I don't know how to go about it. That conflict of interest alone, I feel like should be enough for this board to say, maybe that's not a great idea. We have other people that will serve and really reconsider that reappointment. Um, I just, I can't express enough that, you know, people even said to me, Tali, you're gonna go there and say this and stick your neck out to say this. And we really appreciate it. And I, I'm doing this to say, this isn't just Tali Stark speaking to you. This is a group of people who are too scared to be in this room, a group of people that are too scared to even log on to the meeting to hear this. this. There is a group of people, if you can imagine, standing behind me saying, we're really concerned about this. Why would the select board do that? We don't understand. So I really hope that you can take that into consideration um, as you move through to vote for this appointment. And, um, Patricia Taylor, I believe, wants to speak as well. Um, well she, Tali just said everything um, very eloquently. I sent you um, emails this afternoon. I tried to call um, a couple of you. I've tried to bring this up in the past as well. Um, I just reiterate her concerns. And they're not just her concerns. I have heard from other people who said the same thing about being afraid to speak up. I'm actually a little nervous right now myself, being a single mom, speaking out on this. Um, but um, I believe that there have been some code of conduct issues um, with this detective sergeant as well. Um, not only among other zoning board members, not only within other zoning board members, but with um, people like myself who tried to speak up upon certain things. So I just wanted to reiterate all of those concerns. Well, I guess um, basically we're just here to really advocate on behalf of the community. And I especially noted this when um, we were talking about the unfunded mandate for police reform and when Natalie Plays and Joe Comerford were on the meeting with you guys on the select board um, a few months back. And um, Carolyn, I remember you saying something about how we really are a community and everyone knows each other and everyone, the police officers all know everyone. And that really stuck out to me to really point out how it can be very intimidating to go in front of a zoning board asking for zoning relief and have there be the second in command in the police department staring back at you. And I think that's a real concern. And I think it speaks to a real inequality of power. And I would hope that um, the select board would not want to reinforce that dynamic and would really truly reconsider it considering there are other wonderful people in the community that could serve. And I'm sure that Detective Sergeant could serve on another board that's a non-regulatory board if he were to be appointed to one. And that's all, so thank you. Is there any other uh, public comment? Hearing none, the board. 
Well, I, you know, I understand your concern. I do feel, you know, I, Trevor, it's a little odd to have a conversation. Trevor, can I interrupt you for a moment? Yeah, please go ahead. This discussion centers on an employee and performance exactly. and possibly conduct and that he should have been notified that this was going to happen. Yep. I was not aware of this prior to the meeting, so this needs to stop right now. Otherwise, we could be violating his rights. That's about what I, I was just want to point out. That's another example why this probably should not be an appointment to the ZBA. Um, I attended um, June 2nd. I attended a MMA um, um, webinar to get a discount on our general liability insurance um, before the end of the year. We did get our discount. Um, in the webinar, it was about code of conduct. And my initial reasoning to go was to try to tweak our code of conduct because it doesn't really have consequences and you know it needs some work. There really wasn't anything that came out of the webinar uh, on the code of conduct itself, except that um, it was best practices with case law that um, town employees do not be appointed to um, regulatory boards. Certainly, your non-regulatory boards is not an issue, but it is an issue for regulatory boards. And it is best practices not to do that. We did receive our credit, but because of town meeting, all, you know, so much happening, we as a board have not been able to discuss this. And I, you know, as a policy, and it is really disappointing that, you know, it comes up and it, it shouldn't be taking on a personal you know, no, no person should be um, discussed in, in general, but I, it, part of it is we just haven't had time to discuss this and, and it is disappointing because I think it is very important and um, it has been an issue. Um, so I guess that's about as much as I can say without violating anything else either. So, but it is a problem. I mean, that's just, just a, an example of a problem. Well, why it's a problem. So, well, I would just like to say, you know, publicly that um, this is just one of those instances where, unfortunately, just due to the individual's position in the town, it's making it a conflict. Um, Polly, and I mentioned to the board that we could be in violation of an employee's rights. This conversation needs to stop for litigative purposes. Okay, Everyone well, I'll needs move to on. That. Thank you, Casey. I'll move on. Thank you. Um, so I guess I would just request at this time that the board could table that one appointment and vote on the others. I don't think I'll vote on any any uh, CBA board uh, at this moment. I think I want to I want to discuss this a little bit, a little bit mm -hmm. further uh, with our attorneys and maybe meet meet again on the twenty second when we do the police. Make a, make a motion on that. There's a few things I'd like to say, but I, I'm not allowed to at the moment. So I think I'll wait and um, talk to our attorneys and then have a discussion on, on the 22nd and take a vote then. I just have to say it, 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 it's just a sheer amount of stuff that was happening this time that I mean, no, no, nobody on the board has had the opportunity to discuss, you know, a policy. And it, it's been disappointing that you know, the time has worked out that we haven't been able to, but um, I, I, we have, we should discuss our code of conduct to make sure that there isn't anything that we can um, tweak and then also talk about, you know, the best practices. There was a couple other things that came up that we could talk about as well. When we have the time. Okay. Is there, is there a motion to table it? Yep, I made a motion to table till the 22nd. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I Thank really you. Appreciate it. Thank you, ladies, for coming in. Good. David? Yes. Can you repeat the vote for me? I didn't hear all of it. Did you guys vote to 
Table, the Table zoning. Table Did you vote the rest of the appointments you mentioned? Yes. Yes. All the rest of the appointments have been approved. Um, three zero zero. zero. And um, we just held on the last two. And I think we, you know, we added Lily Dwight as the appointment to the town moderator. That was just highlighted as a question uh, for the uh, community preservation committee. But everything else, I think, is good to go. I went back and I looked to see what the appointment was last year for um, community preservation, and I don't see a name on the annual appointment list. So I think it we it might, might have, have done it after, after, but I need more research. I think it was a little bit after that, if if I remember right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, select board priorities. Got a few. Hmm. I um well obviously the senior housing committee has been meeting on a regular basis so I'd like somewhere to put in senior housing but I think the senior center and move, trying to make a decision on the senior center and trying to get that open has got to be one of our top priorities anybody else want to speak and then I see well in the senior center it's you know um Honestly, I think we're between a rock and a hard place right now with that building. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion is to just see what the cost would be to be able to move them into the um, rectory part of the uh, church. Uh, I know the, uh, there is a handicapped bathroom. It's only one bathroom, but with the unisex, it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, the kitchen would need some modification, but other than that, uh, that part of the building is sound. Um, oh gosh, but, we gotta move all our EDS stuff. Yeah, oh God. I know. Uh, but <laughs> it's, no, no, that's the, okay. the that's other okay. option is, you know, I know some uh, Waitley has mentioned something about their town hall. Um, do they have space down there for I, a temporary one? I don't know. They do. I mean, most most seniors. Most seniors drive anyway, so driving down there temporarily might be, I mean, we just need a good space for them. At least temporarily until we either remodel, put an addition on, take the church down, all the things that we've been talking about. I guess the, the priorities would be really like where the rubber meets the road, right? What are we going to do with this building? What are we going to do with the church? Are we going to forego a library loan, right? That the grant thing and do something all together? and spend more money, but have control on what we really want. That's really up to the town to decide. And, and but we should really put, put together a proposal. I know that in the budget for town meeting on Saturday passed the, um, the feasibility study. So hopefully we can get that out and going. Um, I agree that, you know, see, see, you know, just seeing the seniors together was really nice today. We do have a lot of work to do there. That building is not in any condition right now. It, it's a mess inside, and um, air quality is not great. I mean, it just it needs help, and I, I don't know. So did we get did we get um, uh, estimate for the assessment yet, Casey? We literally just did. I haven't even had a chance to look at it, but we literally just got it. I just printed it off, Trevor. If you want to grab a copy, it's on the big copier behind okay. you. Okay. Um. Are we able to, to fund it um, through this fiscal year? I think so. It's, I'm just looking at the total right now. I know, I know we were thinking of moving some money around um, before the end of the fiscal year to make sure we cover it so we can get it going right, you know, right away and not wait for July 1st. So it's $39.35, $3,935 for... Oh various deliverables um it would be a written summary report with estimated quantities and locations of certain issues a summary table of asbestos um, a summary table of lead-based paint testing results quantities and locations of identifiable visible microbial growth photographs a summary table of non-culturable air air slash surface sample testing results and recommendations for further action 
with a table below that that does equal $3,935. I will check with Brenda. I think we can cover it, but I will check with Brenda um, as soon as I can to confirm it. I This is one of the things that I would just sign off on and get going as soon as I confirm the money because I think we might have it in contracted services. If we don't, we could request a transfer from finance committee as well. Okay. I, I, I want to make sure we move on it as fast as possible. I mean, I know you didn't have a real chance to look at it. None of us have. No, but, yet, but um, it makes sense to. I, I, I feel like it's small money to get, small money to get started. Even if we had to take the building down, we'd still have to do that. Yes. Well, right. Yes. So, yeah. Um, I make a motion to um, move forward with this. Mm -hmm. um, I'll second that motion. You need any clarification on that, Casey? No, I'm going to send an email out to Dick okay. and Bob and Brenda and say, let we need to move forward. I'll sign the contract as soon as we find the money. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfen. I can, t I can tell you from vaguely remember from my mold class that He's doing the right, he's doing initial mold evaluation, but he's also doing the spore trap yep. non-cultural thing. That's that's a good thing. Okay. And when I took the lead paint class, um, you know, he's just doing a chip. Right. Which isn't a lot. Um, but it's I think that's got, it's got lead paint. There's no but, doubt. But the exposure I think is not that bad over there. It's from a lead paint point of view compared to the other stuff. I, I know, but I'm saying compared to mold. Oh, and I see what you mean. Yeah. So, yep. It's minimal lead. Well, most people, you know, the lead is really bad for if you're six, right? But yeah. If you're 96, it's not this. Well, I mean, it's not as dangerous as mold. Right. So, I would say yeah, just looking at this. The 60s, we'll bring and, anyway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so just looking at this and trying to dig back into my old classes. I would say that this is seemingly okay. Yeah, it makes All sense right. to at least get a All right. estimate of what's going on there. Okay. Trevor, who made the motion? Um, I think I'm, you made the motion. I, I, I made the motion. Carolyn made it, I seconded. I want okay. to move forward on it just because um, if you go in there, you, I, I'm, I'm, I can smell the mold and I, I feel that that's yeah. an issue. So all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfen. Um, for select board priorities, I, I really, um, such a big topic, right? There's so much to deal with, so much going on at one time, but I feel like the one thing I'm really concerned with is staff uh, bandwidth, like how much they can handle because there's so much coming at once and they, you, you, you're just ineffective if you can't really focus. So the more, I feel like we have a lot of priorities and we, we need to kind of number them. Like if these are not in the top five, then they don't get precedent. Like it's hard because you're, there's always an emergency. Can you do this? Can you do that? And then everything else falls by the wayside and you, you know, it's hard to get the RFP out. Right. And there's, there's, there's so many different things to do. Um, can My, we say can we say RFP though? Can, <laughs> can we all agree on the RFP? I think it's happening, so I feel okay. pretty good about that. It's happening, but um, it's happening. So, but I, but I think the the I just really do worry about the bandwidth as we get open, people coming in, and just there's there's a ton to do. The grant follow up, the sewer project alone. I've been thinking a lot about do we have enough manpower in town right now between the accountant. Barb, Casey, like who's really managing those meetings, the budget, the monthly budget meetings, there's, I'm taking all that information in and looking at the change orders and the approvals and the shop drawings and all that stuff. But it's a, it's an immense amount of work coming in at one time. And I, that's just one topic. And then we have the pipe stuff to deal with. We need to start working on, you know, what are we going to do with old Deerfield? And I, I'm just talking sewer alone. There's so much. And then rebuilding the road up Eagle Brook need, really needs to start. You know, there's a lot that are priorities. And then getting a master plan for downtown, not town master plan, but like, what are we doing with all this stuff? And, and I know we approved that contract with 
uh, Berkshire Design, they've been outstretched too. And so like really get, getting together and planning. So we have nice tree boxes in and just everybody hates them, right? Because they're, what do you put a tree under a power line for? And look, the trees aren't going to grow into the power lines. We're aware of this stuff. There's a lot that we get hammered on. Like nobody thought about this stuff, but we do think about it. It's just that when you see one small section of a project, the larger public doesn't understand all the meetings that have happened before that and thoughts that have gone through. So if we have a larger blueprint plan we can put out that has the common on it, the crosswalks on it. So a priority for me is like getting a priority of what we're doing downtown I, and then these bigger buildings. To follow up on that, I think it's important that we follow up with DOT mm -hmm. to say where they are in the bidding process because the whole reason we started meeting with them to begin with and taking over Sugarloaf Street and all that kind of stuff and getting the money in the transportation bill. And I mean, it's part of a three or four year project, but it's basically so we could move forward on the town common. Right. And so will they let us move forward on the town common if we make a more of a commitment to take the road, you know, the road over, if they make if a, they commitment, make a commitment for their timeline to <laughs> yeah. do the infrastructure. No, I agree. Right. Now that we, I mean, we can meet in person okay again. That? Yeah. You know, I, but I think, you know, Obviously, the whole center of town needs attention. Yeah. Um, you know, what we do with the Leary lot. Um, yeah. Oh. The access. There is a potential per access, yes. access that we could have that we'll have to go well, for a variance to get it. But. Right. Here's a classic example. What we tried to get to happen on the weekend was to give us an allowance down to 50 feet. We didn't get town meeting approval for that for projects. And here the next day, we have leader looking to is selling. The new buyer wants to do a land swap thing for us. But when they purchase that new building, those two lots, the empty lot and the leader lot, come together as one lot. That's just how it works. And what's left? 50 feet that we could maybe get that we, voice that we want an access, access in. But guess what? Now that we don't have access because town meeting didn't give it to us we can't run a street through there so i mean there's there's implications we try to get people to understand and you know the fear comes out that we're going to just pave over all of downtown and and um not really listen to people and do the right thing and we wind up with not being able to do the dream parking lot and entranceway there so it's got people now got to pull in and pull out on south main street instead of a nice loop if we had 50 foot of frontage we could make that happen without a huge problem so these these votes have huge complicated you know, they're larger than one saturday meeting to understand what the implications are the unintended consequences of these votes but that that hurts mm -hmm. um anyways we have started that conversation about a land swap and a so as soon as he purchases, Wait, we're going to meet back and talk. Ten years ago, when we started this. Yep. So I know. I think one of the problems that we had at the town meeting, in my own opinion, was that I think a lot of people were under the mis misunderstanding that all these decisions were going to be made by just the select board, right? And not going through, you know, with site plan, planning board. We're going to run it through everybody to make sure uh, it's just not, you know, we're not going to go out and say, okay, we're going to do 50 feet here and that's it. Right. Yeah. And we're going to go through and we're going to get everybody involved with it, have public hearings on it. Right. Um, it's just, you know, yeah. it's frustrating because that would be, that would have been a great, great opportunity for it downtown economic been. development and parking. And it still know. will be. We're, we're going to move forward with it. Come yeah. on. We have intentions of moving forward anyway. But it just is much harder and it's more costly. Harder. It's yeah. more hard. It's costly. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of that is costly. Okay. So um, I just want to throw out Cumberland Farms again. Yeah. I, I mean, it's ugly. You'd like to throw them out. In a, in a, well, I, they, if they, they are taking down the stuff, right? Well, supposedly. I heard they put your tanks. You're supposed to be taking those and taking the tanks out. but Yeah. I know well, it's still left it leaves of, us with an eyesore, know, but maybe not renewing something if they don't hurry up and do it. So. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I, I that's to me getting rid of that eyesore is huge. Um, 
I would really love just a regular meeting. Maybe we could just focus on priorities or, you know, even yeah. a Saturday or something. Yeah. We could come in and just talk about some of this stuff more in depth nice idea. Yeah. instead of just trying to fit it into a section on the agenda. It. There's just too much involved. And then we can prioritize, you know, a lot like we did with the capital improvement planning committee this year. Yeah, they had the priorities. They did a great so job with they that. Did, they did a good job. With that. Yeah. And I think we, we carry that and, um, and really, then it gives direction to the staff because I know that you know Casey's can get overwhelmed with all the stuff that's coming at once. And if we can prioritize about, that, and just make it a little more I, helpful. I, Dave, when are you coming back from your vacation? I, I'm I'm really booked until to through the end of the month. So I'm it, coming you know. back July 9th. Um, no, yeah, I mean it, it can be um, you know July, yeah. I mean, that's, so it's only so, a couple weeks um, away. So. Yeah, I know. Uh, so how about you could do the tenth or something like that if you want to just do a Saturday morning. I mean, it's only like a few hours to just so it's not craziness. You guys wouldn't want to do like a Friday afternoon or something. I could do a Friday afternoon. The problem um, is, I only see my husband on the weekends, <laughs> so I kind of hate to give up. I can Saturdays. deal with a redhead if you do it on a Friday afternoon. Oh well, <laughs> we could do it earlier in and the week. That's weekend. not safe. <laughs> how about maybe? Um, the 12th you the 12th i, I don't think it's I have hard any... on weekdays for me because i work oh, you know oh. i'm just always in the berkshires or somewhere else so it's just difficult to give well, up we that could do time a, right so now how about a sunday afternoon yeah fine with me i mean would, would a sunday yeah. afternoon be okay yeah, well, it's fine. totally fine on the okay 11th. so let's let's try the 11th okay. we could meet here Casey yeah. could post it Yep, and just anybody's welcome. We can just talk about what we want. Yeah, let's just let's and give some priorities so that the staff kind of knows what what is like, what has to go on the back burner and what doesn't. You want to? So, what time were you guys thinking? Of? Anytime, I'm free anytime. About three o'clock. Bloody hot late? by then. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. What's um, whatever you want. My husband's usually gone back. Or we're heading back. Okay. I was thinking maybe two, but it's well, two is fine. Two yeah, I mean, he, he usually leaves in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. All right. So, two o'clock? Yep. Two o'clock on the 11th. Casey, can you post that, please? Two o'clock on the 11th of yep. July. And we're just going to have a little retreat here, talk about our priorities. I think that will be really productive. Indeed. And then we can make a list of all the things we got going. Yeah. I think it makes sense. And then all uh, of us have stuff that we're, you know, yeah, already involved in. So let's make our list yeah. and then combine our list. Yep. How's that? Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, July 11th at two o'clock. Yep. At the town hall. Carolyn's bringing sticky buns. Well, I'll bring some snacks. <laughs> it's more productive to eat and drink. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have a good time. I know what okay. I'm going to bring, but I can't share. <laughs> um, okay. Next item. Please. Um, I three top three budget priorities to continue federal funding to the state. I, I mean, I have to say infrastructure. Yeah. We've got to get infrastructure to support support. Complete. I, I mean, say. infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Yeah, I've got yeah. all all three are sewer roads. Um, you know, that kind of, and culverts, like those are huge. Uh, I mean, obviously I'd take economic development but for the, um, but it's really the infrastructure, getting Leary lot done, you know, so you have parking for businesses downtown, getting the common done. So it's a nice place to be. Sidewalks, um, our roads, you, river road is falling into the river. You've got so many different areas of, of road infrastructure. Three, Chapter 90 spots. does not cover it. Yeah. Like you got to save up two years just to get something done. Um, I can't imagine a small town. I, you know, I think of Conway and they've, you know, my mom, you know, said that their meeting was like, they had to save up multiple years and then I think borrow more money just to get a section of road done because chapter 90 just won't cover it for them. And they have long, you know, these areas in rural, long roads you know and they need a lot of work so and and for me it's sewer infrastructure i know i beat on that all the time but with the amount of pipe work we probably have five million in in south deerfield we have three million up north and then we have probably three million dollars worth of road work going up that one road i mean I, yeah. by the time you put in all the guardrails and everything up up 
by Eagle Brook, it's, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And there's okay. just that, you know, the, the brook on one side is just eating away the road. Casey, is that enough information to convey to um, Natalie? We really need really basic need projects, um, actual okay. like named projects. That's what she's okay. looking for. And we don't have, the only one that we have might be a visioning plan, but we don't have an approach for it. What, so uh, what do you need? So you Hold need on. a specific project would be the road. Um, there's at least Pine, Nook, Pine Nook Road. There's at least three spots on River Road yeah. that are- um, Hold on a second, let me show you guys plus. something. Okay, Hold I think there's something that- Let me just like screen a, share something. Like we did with that answered questions and answer thing, there's a survey I think we need okay. to do. Yes. yes. All right, let's- There's a um, survey. Oh, it's not gonna work, is it? All right, bear with me. I'm gonna have to find it. Okay, so this is the request form and what it asks you for is your budget priority with the name of the project, the amount okay. requested, yep. project Got overview, it. project need, status, total cost, and requested how will funds be spent? Is there a phasing plan? Does it already oh, we, have federal or state funding? <laughs> is it eligible? So we don't have these details. I could do That's this the for the upshot. sewer. I can do this for the sewer. When does it need to be in by? The 18th. Okay, so we could do so this for the sewer. So if you get me the basics, sure. we could try to do that, but it has no federal funding. So we would just need to acknowledge that as well. Actually, we probably I thought we work put with in, Jennifer on it. I thought we put in a $65 million for the sewer already. To we put in an ask. We never heard back. Right. Yeah, I know. So, so we can definitely do this for the sewer piping projects, and then we have the um, decommissioning of Old Deerfield and pipe project, um, the Forest Main and pump stations from Old Deerfield to South Deerfield. We can put that project in. That'll have some funding from the federal government, possibly, um, and and the pipe project we can we could get funding from the feds on that as well. Both of those can be USDA, but there should be other funds other than USDA. I mean, they need an infrastructure bill to be able to afford these projects. Probably 20 million bucks to get that decommissioned and brought down here. You know, that'll save us money in the long run, but that's a huge amount of money. Up front. So Trevor, why don't you work with Jennifer on that? I'm gonna send okay. her the link so that she can yeah. work I'll on filling it out, but she needs the information from you. Okay, I'll do that. And it that. is due on the 18th, which is Friday. It's like, I know. Of course it's due on the, the 18th. Sewer, the sewer is important, but I, I, I mean, we have to get back to the basic road work. Right. Um, some of the culverts are half a million dollar culverts. And um, we still haven't gotten the FERCOG to prioritize and finish the inventory yet, have we, for South no. Deerfield? Not yet. They've been working on the inventory. Okay. Um, we've got to keep pushing them on that. We got to be ready for. We have old Deerfield done, you know, the upper older around Deerfield um, River because of, I got mass dot to do it. Right. But we have nothing down here, and we got to get that done because we have some big culverts here, yep. including on River Road. Yeah. And those three spots on River Road that are probably over a million dollar fixes. Right. right? Just. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, looking at it based on years of, you know, washouts and stuff. I mean, they've got to be million dollar jobs. Yeah. So we need- The issue is the we river. don't have anything shovel ready. Uh, yes, we do. We do, Casey. We but can come up we with don't. something. We, we have preliminary, we have some preliminary engineering from River Road. Leary Lot. And we have, we have Leary Lot <clears throat> preliminary. We've got, we've we've been putting stuff. I mean we got. I mean we're trying to be shovel ready on a lot of stuff. Yeah, but I mean it's like how, how much money do you spend to just sit there and cross your fingers that they're ever going to send you any money? Yeah. I know. Well, I mean we're going to have to do some stuff mm. on River Road. I was just waiting to. I mean, hurricane season is supposed to be really active this year, so I mean the MEMA we movie might people. Get bit. <laughs> right, Nemo and people were freaking out because we've already had so much activity early in the season. So they said this is going to be a very active season. 
So we just have to have an event and then we're gonna, we gotta put in all this stuff. Um, so what I would appreciate is if you can point us in the direction of where all this information lives, because we can't, we don't have that in front of us at our fingertips. Okay. Uh, you know, we have, we have a lot of stuff. Um, um, Meadow Road there, we did, you know, we put in for that grant. We actually got that grant, that 800, almost $800,000 grant that has a huge amount of um, information because that grant was actually accepted by the feds. It was just that we had to turn the money back because we didn't have our um, hazardous mitigation plan approved by, you know, got stuck in DC for two years. So we didn't have enough time to spend the money, but that is a complete application. All we have to do is update the numbers. And that was, um, I think our match was 200,000, but we had eight, almost 800,000 from the federal government on that. And that was, so that was a million dollar project four or five years ago. So it's probably almost double now. And that was a whole road and the piping on the whole road. So that, that was, that's completely ready to go. And that should be in the file. River Road, Kevin did some preliminary um, engineering with Ty and Bond um, when it, we first identified at least one of those spots. There's some preliminary engineering. I don't, so there's um, three budget priorities that she offers the town. So we need to pick three priorities that we would want to fill in. Well, the sewer is the biggest. Right. And we have all the engineering to the sewer. So that would be number one, right? You, you agree? Yeah. Okay. So sewer is number one. I think River Road has got to be number two because that's a big ticket item. Yep. And we have multiple, we, we have, uh, there's got to be some, we've had people out there looking at different spots, those three spots. So we have some information somewhere. What do you think should be proposed? Well, I think the, the senior center area should be the third. Okay, Myself. do you hear that, Casey? We have, no. we have preliminary information on the senior center. Dave's, Dave thinks the senior what center. What preliminary information? We, we have, we've had people look at the senior center. Yes, but we don't have any idea of what the feasibility of using the space is. That was the point of asking for capital funds to do that. I know, but if they're going to fix it up for us, we'll, we'll use it. I think you have to have a feasibility study about how you're going to use that space. So basically a plan. Well, we got to move on that. As soon as July 1st comes out, please get that out to bid. For the survey study? Yeah, the assessment. So we have more information on it. I, I, can't, I, I think we should put the senior center in anyway. Yeah, it's not what they call shovel ready, but we definitely got to do something. We don't even have a number. That's what I mean about having a feasibility plan yeah. is you need a number. I, I, have, I have some numbers from when, I mean, we had somebody go through there. We don't we have to evaluate. We don't, we don't have numbers for use. Uh, do the use, do the re renovation match the use? I agree we don't have those numbers, but we have preliminary numbers from the initial per person walking through and, and, you know, giving us some raw numbers. So are you Number? asking me to add the senior center as the third option? Dave couldn't hear you. Did you, did you want, are you were asking, asking if you want the senior, senior center? senior center as a third option for those budget priorities? The piping project, the I, decommissioning project for no, old no. Deerfield plant, no. and then the, the whole senior sewer, center? The whole sewer project. But Which they're two different sewer? projects with two different numbers. I know, but we're not doing the decommissioning. That's down the lane. We got to do piping and we got to do, we got to finish South Deerfield. 
Shell Deerfield, we got all the numbers on. This is what I mean about figuring out the priority. What is the number one thing you want to do? Number one. And then thing the number two the thing, and then the number three thing. I think the number one thing is the South Deerfield sewer treatment plant. If we can get help with that, then that that eliminates the burden for other projects. And that's a 19, at least, you know, potentially $19 million project. It's more than that now. I know it's more than that now, but at least put in for 19 million. We've already paid some of it already with the clarifier, but that, that has to be the number one project. Right? You don't want to do commission. Do commission with the number one project. No. It's okay. If we haven't had the feasibility on it because no. Deerfield Academy could be using it or. Yeah. I'm not overly convinced that we should decommission that plant anyway. So. Me neither. Me neither. So, um, so the South Deerfield wastewater oh, treatment plant upgrades project, the old and South Deerfield pipe replacement project. What's the third one? Senior center, right? Did you okay. mention River Road? No, you didn't mention River Road. You have three choices. Two of them, one's 19 million, one's about 9 million-ish, depending on what the estimates for old Deerfield and South Deerfield are, because I would include them both. It's, it's a piping replacement project. I would call that one thing, even though we've split it out conceptually. But then what would be the third thing? Unless we have shovel ready numbers for River Road, I don't know how we can give that out as information because they're gonna ask for that information because they're gonna to wanna to categorize that into a capital funding um, legislative action, I would think. And this is something she needs in two days. We've had the request for a couple of a couple of days, but this is the thing. This is something that the board has to discuss. Well, you know, the unfortunate part about it, July one, everything that they do right now is going down the tubes and they're starting all over again. That's why she's asking, I think. Huh? I think so we should list River Road. Yeah, I think River Road's a priority because if that washes out, we've got a major problem. Uh, Kay, we're in danger of losing it right now. Casey, there are at least three spots on River Road. We have some preliminary stuff on River Road. I, I think you can easily say between four and six million dollars on River Road. So those are the, our, our big ticket expenses. Okay. We can come up with somebody coming and doing something real quick on River Road. We have to. So you're saying about four million for River Road? No. Well, I would say between four and six million. Because there's three spots and it's at least a million dollars a spot. And that I'd be shocked if it was less than a million on any one of those spots, and it probably is a lot more. Okay. We put in River Road for okay. four, between four and six million. That makes sense, certainly. So the three priorities, Trevor, were South Deerfield upgrades project for 19 million, Old Deerfield, South Deerfield pipe replacement project at 9 million. That was my estimate based on what you just mentioned. And River Road using preliminary estimates for three different spots of between four and six million. So the South Deerfield to Old Deer, uh, South Deerfield, Old Deerfield to South Deerfield is like I would put at twenty-two million for decommissioning that plant and piping. Oh no, it we down. weren't talking about decommissioning. We we're just talking just about the, piping the piping project. Oh, the piping itself it would be probably three, yeah, about nine at the max for South Deerfield and Old Deerfield. Okay. And then even with construction costs the way they are. Yeah. Yes. Okay. For the piping work. Yep. And then the, uh, and then Pine Nook Road is, I mean, when we do that sewer, we should do the road at the same time. And that needs to happen. Oh, okay. So that, in that, in that description of the piping, Casey, 
you need to say rebuilding of Pine Nook Road. And, and then I would, I, would, I would put another three on that. So you're up to 12 million if you rebuild Pine Nook Road and replace that piping at the same time. I, I would describe it as the piping for Old Deerfield and South Deerfield and the rebuilding of Pine Nook for that piping part of the piping job. Because that the whole road has to be rebuilt when they go to do that. From bottom up. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think yeah, because sure. the brook is right along the side and then yeah. I mean just the permitting along is gonna be like gross. It's a lot. Yeah, with the water right there and the brook right there. I just can't even imagine. No, it's, it's gonna a be lot gross. of work. It's gonna be gross. But it's gotta get done. I, I mean, know just, it does yeah, cover. I, I, I know. agree. I do. I just I don't know how to judge that... it though, when to do it and when. Just wait for Dan at the end. Maybe I have a hurricane. So then River Road is the third one at four to six million. Is that what you want me to leave it at? Yes. Yeah. I, there's three spots. They're well over a million dollars, I'm sure, a spot. So I, to say four to six is probably reasonable. Okay. They have to be stabilized. And once you get into that stabilization work, it's just it's, it's, is, it's, true. it's like five hundred thousand dollars for a thousand feet and, and you know both of those are over a thousand feet oh yeah so that's going to be a lot of money yeah all right um in our mail it was the just to extend the COVID-19 accommodations. Is this new or old? Oh, this is June 10th. Yeah, and this is kind of obsolete at the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was kind of earlier in the week. Yeah. <laughs> it's COVID, right? It changes by the hour. Town of Ministers, Traders, report. So... Most of the last couple of weeks we're dealing with town meeting prep and now we're doing follow-up. The We completed some of the tasks required to forward the zoning bylaw changes to the attorney general's office as preparation for Barbara's mailing. There have been a number of HR tasks to deal with. Uh, Kevin, before he left on vacation, was working to coordinate the tree box installation and mitigate some of the issues with that as well as the billing and reporting act activities and Kelleher drive tasks. If you drive by, you'll see that Kelleher has had some, there's been some work done over there. We yeah, did have to hire out a company to do some of the other work that we could do ourselves, but the crew was out at least once that I know of, probably twice based on what Kevin told me. And then this additional work we had to hire out. Um, the, a couple of other things that have gone on in the office are simply trying to collaborate with financial personnel because we're right in the midst of trying to close the fiscal year. So we're chasing bills. We're also checking in on contracts because that's, that's part of that closure process. Yep. I don't know how many transfers we're gonna have. We may have some more. So we'll probably have to get, and I'll, I'll have Brenda coordinate with the finance committee as well. We'll probably have to get them together by early July to mid July, because the 15th is the drop dead deadline for all transfers for the fiscal year. We have a lot of billing or a lot of reporting and reimbursement requests for MVP projects. That takes up a lot of time. Yep. So that's gonna be something that you'll see us working on in the next couple days. Next week we have we have several meetings, but we'll have we should see some updates. I'm hoping from DLS based on treasury updates. At least that's what Heath, I can't remember his last name from DLS said. And so now we're just want, trying to wind that year up, and there's a lot of tasks that are involved with that. I do also want to mention, 
I probably said it earlier, but I think we should move forward with the purchase of the sound equipment so that, you know, we just don't have the sound out of there. Cause I know if we have a big room, nobody will ever hear all that. Um, and that, that was, it was under, I mean, it was over four, but there was one aspect that we already have purchased. So we don't need to spend the money on that, but I think it's important to move forward with that. And then we had talked about purchasing a dedicated camera uh, for, for this town. Um, and I know that Casey was talking with like Jeff and Sunderland and they, they are all, try, every town's trying to figure out, well, how do we do this? So they could use our template. You know I mean? It's, I think it's a good, you know, Larry Berger, a uh, resident in town, is a good sound engineer. And he offered all his time pro bono. He came over and kind of came up with an idea and he, we all met with FCAT and they've been great. And Mike Murphy from the, um, is it Mike Murphy? Kevin. Kevin Murphy uh, from Frontier came over and wicked helpful and helped us do this so we could be a Zoom and have a, a Zoom meeting. So I think it's important to move That's forward with that opinion. stuff, but yeah. it's fairly economical and I sure. think it's worth, and, and the beauty of this sound is that we can hold a meeting out on the common. We can hold a meeting outside anywhere, anywhere you can, it'll, so it'll come with a I cart. know we have leftover cares act money and i know we have now the arpa money I, and we have uh, we don't we have capital. leftover cares act money we don't we, we have uh we have uh capital though fcat capital right or capital we do have that, fcat capital yeah. yeah so and i think that's focusing on well, I think that would be a good way to use and it. i think chris is okay with that he just wants to make sure he gets reimbursed so so he was going to purchase his stuff we'll All sign right. off on getting that money to him um and I think it's a great way if we want to hold a meeting outside, people can hear us. It's it's a whole cart you move around, um, 16 channels coming in. I think it's going to be good. Um, do you want us to vote on that? Because I make a motion to approve that and move forward with that. Uh, on the 22nd, because I'll get, I'll, I have a I have the spreadsheet, but I'll clean it up on what we need and then we'll do it on the 22nd. Yeah. Because yeah, have, sounds... we'll have it ready to go. Okay, that sounds fine. Yep. All right. Good. We'll just need to work through with Chris how he's going to do the procurement if he needs to. It's under 10, so it's not a big deal. It's yeah, just... I think he was, he said he could purchase it all. He just, and then, and I said, you've got to get those receipts to Brenda and then Brenda, and then we could do a, we could sign Well, up. we have to, I want to make sure how Brenda wants us yeah, to do that because I right. don't know how they've done it. I'll let past. you guys figure that out. Yep. That'll okay. Be fine. Right. Okay. Public comment. Any public left? No, nope, I think we had oh, one phone number there. Who's a public? Any public well, want to still have six people on? But... No, nope, no other comments well, in chat. No okay. public comment. All right. Thank you for town meeting. Thank you for yeah. all your work, Casey and. Jen and everybody. Yes, the meeting was great. There was a huge amount of effort that went into that from a lot of different offices and people. And I want to thank everybody that did that. I mean, yes. we had members of the police department. John was yep. there. Kevin and his guys were transporting things. Jennifer was coordinating tables and chairs and all those things that nobody really sees because it all happens in the background. Yep. Um, they did Ryan a tremendous there. job. Ryan and I really think they deserve everyone's thanks hoofing chairs and tables everywhere Brian, and setting up. Brian, Brian Ravish was there, did Brian, a lot of work. Brian, Adam, they yeah. all were working really hard to do that. Thank so I appreciate much. everybody's yeah. efforts. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Motion, Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This is not bad. Not bad. Not bad for a person. Uh, in person, right? Yeah, I'll okay. second that. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Walton. All right. Thank you all very much. Good yeah. night. Good night.